My name is Walter Palencia with UC View Digital Signage. Today, we will be going over the interface and its feature sets in regards to educational institutions. The first thing that you will see on the screen once you log in is the dashboard. Now here, you'll be able to see things like how many players you have online, storage status, account details, featured applications, and also our tools that will get you support like video tutorials, support tickets, and also our online chat. On the left hand side, we have all of our tools, everything from content creation, scheduling to management, analysis and support. So the first thing we want to go ahead and do is create the look and feel of the screens. So we'll go right over to locations, click on layout designs. As you can see, I already have two different layouts already created although it does allow you to create whatever type of look and feel you choose. For this example, we'll go into the Riverside Unified School District layout that we've created here. Now this is going to be the same form as if you went ahead and created a brand new one. First thing you're gonna see is the ability to name it, whatever you like. We like to name the layouts based on what they're going to be used for. So as, as an example here, it's just named Riverside Unified School District because it's the same look and feel that will be carried across all the different screens, followed by the player resolution. Here you'll be able to select from any preset resolution or also have the ability to select your custom resolution just in case you had 4K screen or any other type of device. You have the ability to set the resolution in the screen here into a portrait or a landscape orientation along with the option for a multi-screen environment that's where you would set up video walls so all you would do is hit the checkbox give the system the number of screens along with the resolution per screen and you'll be able to set up the look and feel for a video wall for this example, we'll go ahead and leave it as is. Following that, you'll be able to create or add a background image. As you can see here, we've selected a background image that has a blue background with the Riverside Unified School District logo, along with an area for a ticker. Once we've done that, you would go ahead and save those settings, and it would open the options to add your different sections. As you can see here, I can go ahead and select from any section name that I would like to use. Once I add that, you'll see it follow th uh, fall down to the existing boxes section. Now here you have two ways to position and resize each zone. You can go ahead and type in the values, which are pixel accurate, or you can go ahead and drag and drop so you can resize however you like. Once you've gone ahead and set up the layout the way that you like, you would click update all and that would save your position. Next, we're gonna go into players. So once you've created the look and feel of the screen, we wanna go ahead and create the actual locations with the players inside of them. Now when we refer to players, that's going to be the screen, that will run the content. So as you can see here, we have a couple different locations. We'll go ahead and create a location here. So when we do so, it's gonna ask us for a name, followed by the hours and days of operation. So by default, it will stay at 24 hours, but you do have the ability to set up a specific schedule. If you do, what is going to happen is that the system will turn on and off based on that specific schedule that you set up. Following that, you have the ability to select the time zone in which this location is in, along with the address and a couple other settings like automatically restarting your location at specific dates and times and when you can allow schedule updates. So we'll go ahead and log into our district HQ location and discuss players. 
So within our system, once you create that physical location, now you can add the different players within it. As you can see here, we've selected District HQ and we have a screen there in the lobby. So we'll go ahead and add another one here. So you can see similar form to when you're creating the layout, it asks you for a name. So we'll go ahead and name this cafeteria. After we name it, it's going to go ahead and ask for a password. Now when you go ahead and boot up your LG screen, you'll go in and select the URL that will load our software onto the screen itself using WebOS. Once you go ahead and do that, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to give you an alphanumeric password, which you would go ahead and type right in here. Once you type that in, the next option is going to be layout. So as you can see, we have the option of selecting one of the two that we had created here. So we'll go ahead and select the Riverside Unified School District layout. And now we'll go ahead and select save. And we've successfully added a player to this specific location. Once we've done that, now the system is ready to go. Now we can begin to add content and assign departments and users into adding content and the types of content we can add. We want to go over departments and users. Now we do have the capability of tying in with Active Directory for single sign-on, but we'll go ahead and click on departments. As you can see here, I have my main department, which is Riverside Unified School District, along with HR. So we'll go right into HR here. And as you can see, it gives me a form to fill out. Now here within this form, I can go ahead, name night department, Again, select the time zone that this department is in, fill out main contact information. As I go down this page here, it'll give me the options. As you can see here, I can select which look and, fear, uh, look and feel, what layout the department will be able to access, along with what section within that screen that department has access to along with the location that I want to grant them access for. Now we do have granular, granular options as well, where you can go ahead and set up depending on the department. So for example, you can go ahead and allow this department to create and um, edit campaigns, add content, view its locations, but completely lock it out of anything else. And the reason you might want to do this is that way you have different departments handling specific areas of a screen or as well having a specific department that manages one site, for example. And again, we do have Active Directory integration with this, so we would be able to go ahead and bring in those Active Directory groups as well. Now, as far as content goes, we're able to add any type of content whether it's file-based content, whether it's web-based content, along with our content creation tools that we have available. So first one that we'll go over is EasyBoard. EasyBoard is going to be what I would, uh, I would go ahead and say what a PowerPoint equals to be. So here, you'll be able to see a lot of our templates that give you basic animation. So transitions, uh, where you can overlay text uh, on top of an uh, image, fade in, fade out. So your very basic animations. You can create your own if you like, or use one of our templates. We also have microsite. Microsite will allow you to bring in an HTML5 project uh, created with any editor that uh, your designers are used to using like Google Web Design, Adobe Muse, and what have you, and import that into our system. What that's going to do is allow you to completely brand it in whichever format you need it to be in. Now, once it's inside of our interface, 
our system analyzes that HTML project and lets you edit specific areas without the need of knowing any HTML. So for example, here, this office directory, we can go ahead and uh, click on it. It's going to bring up the microsite itself. Now again, this was all created in HTML, but now an end user could come in here and change text without the need of knowing any HTML. Same goes for any type of imaging as well. Now the last piece of content creation that we have here is our app store. Now we call it an app store because it's very easy to reference to iOS or uh, Android on a mobile device. So it allows everybody to relate what uh, we're looking at here. Now within the app store, we do have social media applications, news, finance, different weather applications that range from a single or five day forecast to a Doppler radar, informational apps, live streaming. Of course, we have different date and time widgets along with templates for layouts as well. Now, when we wanna go ahead and add content, it becomes very easy. We'll click on add new content right up at the top. It's gonna to ask us what location do we want it to play at? So we'll go ahead and select the district HQ. Now you can go ahead and select multiple locations at once and also open up a specific location and select one or multiple screens within that specific location. So we'll go ahead and move it right over here. Now it's going to give us a preview of what that content looks like, along with the ability to move it within the zones that we have here and change its duration. As you can see, I can bring in any type of file-based content, live TV, news, weather. Text message would be your own message that you would type in. Easy board and microsite, which we've gone over. Point directly to a web page, use media RSS, or any of the applications from the App Store. In this example, we'll go ahead and select a couple files. So we'll go ahead and choose four files at a time. Now, as these files load, you'll be able to see a preview of what they look like right on the screen. So now, because I've uploaded four files at the same time, I can go back, take a look here, and say I want to bring this menu to the main media location or section. Montana Riverside, uh, Riverside Unified School District. I'll bring it right up to the top there. And then these two I will leave on the side banner. So I'll go ahead and click save. And now it's going to give me a list of the content that I've added. As you can see, it's going to give me the name of the piece of content, where it's running, the media type, and the duration as well. So from here, before we publish our content, we have the option of scheduling. So we can go ahead and say, I want this piece of content to run from the beginning of the month to the end of the month, or you can also day part. So you can have a breakfast menu and a lunch menu running at different times automatically without anybody having to go ahead and manually do that. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll go ahead and select the menu here. And we're going to say that this menu is going to be active the month of March. So I'll go ahead and do so. I'll add that. But I'm also going to say it's going to run Monday through Friday. But it's going to run right after our breakfast time. So we'll go ahead and say 11 a.m. And we will have it end at let's say 2 p.m. So now what's going to happen is that this piece of content is automatically going to schedule itself in and take itself out of the schedule based on those parameters that we set. So as you can see here, now it's only gonna run between March 1st to the 31st. 
Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. So now we'll go ahead and publish our content changes, which will give us a nice little list of all the pieces of content we added or modified. Click publish. And now we can actually watch our schedules right from here. So you don't have to go out to the screen in order to see what the content looks like on there. So I'll go ahead and click on this little monitor next to cafeteria. And it'll bring up a preview. So as you can see, it's giving me the content that we have added within those sections. Now being that we added the menu and said we wanted to start running in the beginning of March, that's why we don't see the menu in the main area. And again, we haven't added any other pieces of content in the other sections. Now that's a quick overview of what the system could do. There are tons of other features that are built in at no additional cost within the interface. Uh, a couple of which could be interactive content, on-demand, synced content, along with uh, different permission levels and reporting tools that you can use uh, to provide proof of performance and such. If you do have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. We'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have or set a personalized web demo uh, as well for you. Thank you very much and look forward to helping you out with any of your digital signage needs.